America, home to some of the most beautiful and diverse national parks in the world. Have you ever wanted to wander through the meadows of Yosemite or look out across the vast expanse of the Grand Canyon? Well, America is full of unique and compelling places like these waiting to be discovered, which puts America top of the list for many adventurers to explore, including myself, which is why I spent the past 14 days traveling across America. In this video, I'll be exploring America's three best national parks, Zion, the Grand Canyon, and Yosemite, visiting all the best locations and cramming in all the essentials into my trip. And I'll be sharing it all with you in order to help you explore these beautiful places. Here's how I explored America's best national parks. But before we get started, there are several things that you need to know before visiting these iconic locations. You don't need a permit if you want to visit Zion or the Grand Canyon, but you will need a permit if you decide to visit Yosemite. I didn't know this until a couple days before I went, and by then it was too late. I was still able to visit Yosemite after 4 p.m., but if you want to visit between 6 a.m. and 4 p.m., you will need a permit which you can get from the recreation.gov website. Likewise, if you're wanting to hike either the cables up El Capitan or Angels Landing in Zion, which I'll show you later in this video, then you will also need permits to hike these trails. My biggest regret was that I was only able to spend 24 hours at each national park. If I was to do my trip again, I'd definitely spend two or three days at each. It's really difficult to access any national park by public transport in America. So either you'll need access to a car or you can book yourself onto a guided tour. For me, it actually worked out slightly cheaper to rent a car, which cost about $60 per day, and then I just had to pay for fuel. And finally, I did my trip at the start of September, which made for pretty ideal weather and wasn't quite as busy as it would have been during school summer holidays. But I reckon any time between May and October would be a good time to visit, but if you could avoid the summer holidays, I definitely would. Yosemite is pretty easy to get to. From San Francisco, it's about a four hour drive or about six hours from Los Angeles. You can do it in a day if you take a guided tour, but it will be a very long day and I wouldn't recommend driving yourself if you're just going for the day, as it would end up being about at least 10 hours of driving. Once you arrive at the park gates, then there's a $35 entry fee, or if you plan on visiting three or more of the national parks in a year, then you can get the annual pass for all the national parks for $80. From the main gate, it's about a 30 minute drive into Yosemite Valley, but on the way there, there is the giant Sequoia Forest. I definitely recommend stopping here. It's about a two mile walk round trip to see the big tree with a hole in it. The majority of the walk is paved and doable in trainers. It's nice because it's slightly different vibe to the rest of the main valley and a little bit quieter while getting to experience a nice walk through a picturesque forest. When you see national parks on TV, is it just me or do you get the impression that they are full of wildlife just standing around for people to take photos of? Well, I certainly had that impression and well, wildlife still is there. Like I said, this really cool peregrine falcon. But if you're only visiting for the day, don't expect to see every single type of wildlife. You might see some, but likely there's not going to be a bear just hanging around the car park. Continuing the drive into Yosemite Valley, there are several stunning viewpoints that you're going to want to stop at. Best are Tunnel View and Yosemite Valley View. Though they are quite busy, they offer unrivaled views of Yosemite and are definitely worth the slight detour. As you return back into Yosemite Valley from Tunnel View, you'll find yourself in the El Cap Meadow. But make sure you park before the meadow as you might get caught out by the one-way system if you go too far. From here, it's a great location to get a good perspective on the sheer scale of the valley and the 3,000 foot walls towering above. It's also a great location to stop for a picnic or just sit and hang out and watch the sunset. My final stop in Yosemite was a short hike along the valley from Camp 4 up to Yosemite Falls. In total, the hike was only about 1.5 miles and was paved all the way so it'd be fine in normal footwear. As I couldn't get a day permit, I was a bit short of time before the sunset. So if you have more time, I'd recommend either the hike up to the top of Yosemite Falls or the half dome trail if you're after something a bit more challenging. The Lower Falls Trails is interesting to explore, although I imagine it would be a lot more impressive after a period of heavy rain. Zion National Park is unlike any place I've ever been before, and definitely a must visit for anyone who travels to this part of the world. It's easily accessible from Las Vegas and roughly a two and a half hour drive to get there. Although I combined visiting Zion with the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, which I would definitely recommend if you have longer than 24 hours. Once you arrive in Zion, you have two choices, either complete the scenic drive through the park or park at the visitor center and take the free shuttle bus into the canyon. I arrived at the East Gate, so I drove through the canyon on my way to the visitor center. This was easily one of the most scenic drives that I've ever done. And along the route, you're going to want to stop off at Checkerboard Mesa. As with all national parks, they get busier throughout the day and I arrived at the park at 7am and it was perfect because I had the park to myself for the first hour or two. As you continue your drive you'll arrive at Mount Carmel Tunnel, a mile long tunnel that connects the east part of the park with the west and provides truly incredible views upon exiting the tunnel. To enter Zion Canyon, you will need to use the free shuttle service from the visitor center, which stops up at various places within the canyon. Zion is famous for two main hiking trails. 
Angel's Landing, which is described as the scariest hike in America, or The Narrows, which involves hiking up the river into a slot canyon at the end of the valley. Both are truly unique experiences that you can't get in any other national park. But the day I arrived, there had been heavy rain and more rain was forecast so the Narrows was closed to the public. Which I wasn't really that bothered about, as from what I've heard from other people, hiking in freezing cold water isn't actually that enjoyable once the novelty has worn off. I was also lucky enough to get a permit to hike Angel's Landing in the 24 hour lottery before, which I think is pretty rare and only about a 10% chance of being successful, so I definitely recommend trying to get the permit as soon as possible, as I was actually unsuccessful when getting the permit the day before. The hike up to Angel's Landing is about a 5.4 mile round trip and takes most people about four hours to complete. If you don't have a permit, then you can hike up the Scouts Lookout following a series of steep switchbacks up the mountain. This takes you about two thirds of the way up and you still get pretty good views from here. From Scouts Lookout, the trail is chained and becomes single file most of the way up. The route by itself isn't technical, but what makes it so challenging and America's slariest hike is the exposure. Are you scared of heights? Watch this next shot and tell me if you'd be scared or not. Like I said, this route isn't technical, but I'd only recommend it if you're a competent hiker and not scared of heights. The most difficult part of the trail wasn't actually the route, it was the fact that it was really sandy all of the way up, which actually made a lot of the surfaces a lot more slippy than if it was just rock. Once you reach the summit, it levels out a little and you get outstanding views of Zion Canyon. I definitely put this in my top five day hikes that I've ever done. The Grand Canyon speaks for itself as one of the most iconic places in America. But do you know where this shot is actually from? Well, if you said the Grand Canyon, you'd actually be wrong. I thought the same like you, but it's actually outside of the Grand Canyon National Park and located a couple hours drive east at Page, Arizona. Time constraints meant I only had time to visit the Grand Canyon and not Horseshoe Bend. But if you have more than 24 hours, I definitely recommend spending the night in Page and you can also check out Antelope Slot Canyon. If you want to visit the Grand Canyon, you have two choices north or south. If you want to visit both, then it's either a 21 mile hike across the canyon or a four and a half hour drive around the edge. The south rim is the more popular side as it's easier to access from Phoenix and Las Vegas, whereas the north rim is a little bit more quiet. I decided to visit the north rim as it's only a couple of hours from Zion National Park if you want to visit both. When you arrive at the north rim, you can park your car at the visitor center car park. From here, you are going to want to check out Bright Angel Point. The paved trail is only about a half mile round trip and provides you with incredible views over the the canyon. I was actually super lucky with the weather as I literally just as I was leaving the trail some thick clouds rolled in meaning that you couldn't see out into the canyon. So I would definitely check the weather forecast before you set off as you don't really want to drive five hours only to find out you can't see into the canyon. If you wanted to go for a hike at the North Rim you're even going to want to hike the Widforce Trail which is a five mile long traverse along the canyon rim or take the North Kaibab Trail into the canyon. Both of these trails are out of back trails so you just hike as far as you want and then you're going to have to hike the same way back. 90% of people who visit the Grand Canyon don't actually go into the canyon and just stay at the rim. I wanted to get a different perspective so I decided to do the North Kaibab Trail into the canyon. The trail is quite steep in places but not too technical. Obviously you're going to make sure that you bring enough food and water as there isn't any way you can refill bottles from in the canyon. And also try to remember whatever you hike down into the canyon you're going to have to hike all the way back up. It's easy to get carried away on the downhill, hike way too far, turn around and realize the only way out is back up the hill you came. It's 1.7 miles and 500 vertical meters down to this tunnel. I hiked a little bit further down to the bridge in the valley. I'm not sure exactly how far down this was, but I'd estimate the hike was about six miles long and seven to 800 in vertical meters total. If you have the opportunity to hike in the canyon, I definitely recommend it as it really gives you a different perspective on the sheer scale of the canyon. Visiting these national parks was definitely the highlights of my trip to America. Some of the hikes I did are definitely up there with the best day hikes that I've ever done. If you ever have the opportunity to visit any national park, you should absolutely take it. I think in life, we often get caught up in the insignificant of our day-to-day -day lives. To overcome this, I always do my best to remember, life is beautiful. Sometimes we just have to notice.